When I think about the beast, the first thing I think about is the smell and the sound. That fantastic sound of the colony buzzing together. The smell from the honey, of course, but the pollen, the wax, the propolis, which is another product of the bees. I think the bees themselves will have that smell. That all mix, and it's like the best recipe for perfume. If you work with the bees, you understand that it's just a lot more than uh, just the honey. You, you see uh, fantastic discipline they have and extremely labor traveling every second minute all day, visiting millions of flowers a day. And if you compute that, you understand that they are actually moving our nature all around and pollinating and f moving from one pistil of a flower to another flower or another pistil. And this is how they really fertilize our nature. As a beekeeper, you see the direct connection between the blooming seasons and the weather impacts, the weather cyclists, and the way the bees are working with it, and how they get impacted by all of these different uh, cycles as well. From the early 2000s, we started to, to see a decline. We started to see the decline in our production uh, and an increase in our bee mortality or challenges in a way, things we, we started to struggle to explain uh, what was going on. We are not doctors of the bees in a way, although we, we monitor them, we, we see them every day, but it came to a point where they were unexplained things for us. And there are many challenges and they, they occur at different times and they have different symptoms and it's becoming really difficult to really uh, analyze and to get the proper symptom of what is going on. It became quite evident for me that we had to systemize the diagnosis of, uh, of those symptoms, of those diseases or these uh, challenges. So I started uh, really developing technologies uh, to assist the beekeeping to understand what is going on. It is the truth that the bees are, and insects in general, are constantly stressed and they're constantly under pressure. And at one point it will be the weather will kill them, or at one other point it will be just that flu that will kill them, or it will be just lack of food, for example. But yes, I would think in the broader scale it's the lack of food, the fact that we have transformed the nature and created vast areas of just one type of culture, which blooms uh, in the two weeks period, which is great for the bees, and then suddenly there's nothing in many, many, many kilometers. So no insect can actually survive in that environment. And if on top of that you, you include deforestation or human areas that just expand, then insects are losing their habitats. So it had become a much bigger project at Bee Futures, uh, from, from the beehives and making a better tool for the beekeepers to, to be sustainable again and, and to help the bees to survive in, in their home. Bee Futures has taken the path of going into the much broader perspective to understand how is human activity in general is impacting the bees and how we can, with a data tool in a way, um, and understanding what the bees are telling us, basically, how we can transform it back. So we are a group of people from Amesto Nextbridge, mostly containing data scientists with PhDs within different areas. And we work within the machine learning and the artificial intelligence area, helping our clients and partners solving issues around understanding data understanding what has happened and what can we do about this and how can we predict the future. This project is about using something organic, the bees, and use the information that they have, that they obtain, and use the machines as a tool to learn from the bees. I mean, as beekeepers, when you open the hive, when you open the frame, you look for movement patterns in the frame. You always try to look for the queen, just to make sure she's there. And you look for the eggs. And so you have to really spend 
time observing uh, the frames which is covered by bees. And then there are the things you don't see as a beekeeper in the real time is, which we know now is that the bees also talk to each other. It's a very distinct pattern, it's a very distinct thing they are doing. They're like vibrating extremely high frequency and she's turning around and she's doing it many, many times and you see bees going around. And many scientists have spent a lot of energy to decode that information, uh, which has then been named the bee woggle dance. There are two forms of it. The most spectacular one where the bees is really uh, twisting her abdomen and with high intensity and turning around and again and going in the other side. You have the other one where the bees are just turning around and around and around. You could almost feel like this is a, she's just lost or something, but no, she's also communicating. So this is what the bee woggle dance links to is, is the food location. It's been performed by the foraging bees, the bees returning to the hive, and they do that dance. They can retranscript the direction, but they can retranscript the distance as well, by the duration of the, of the dance, and also by the intensity of the dance and the number of repetitions. She's basically for telling you, this is my spot, which is the best. And then she will repeat that dance even more to try to attract as many worker bees with her. And that is what the bee woggle dance is about. It's about informing uh, co-workers about the polar position, the GPS location of where we should go. The whole concept, it's so cool. It's just the idea of using bees as biological sensors and then use algorithms to decode their story, being able to provide back to the bees so that they have an easier life. Usually you pick up a nice day and you can sit in front of the beehives and you film it with the timer and then you go back home and you decode it manually, right? And the reality, when you do that type of work, you just capture a very few bee woggle dance for just that day, right? What we think the Bee Futures approach will bring is uh, the systematic and continuous and real-time monitoring of all the bee woggle dances. So we have the cameras in the hive and you have the computing power within the hive and the algorithm to, to decode that information in the hive. Technology is really improving and as equipment is getting cheaper, as people are getting more educated around machine learning and artificial intelligence, we see that there are other areas where we can apply this knowledge. And this hackathon uh, with uh, SAS is to demonstrate that we can help to solve problem within sustainability. What we came to realize is that the, this bee woggle dance, uh, the fact that the bees are telling us exactly where they go, uh, in combination with a broad set of other metrics that we're capturing from the beehives, is telling us tremendous about the suitability of an environment. You have areas in, in France, for example, one yard for many square kilometers around, with no diverse nature around them anymore. That is a, an insect desert, basically. No insects can survive in that environment anymore. We have to bring biodiversity back into this monoculture area, at least to some extent that the, the pollinators and insects can survive in these areas. The bee woggle dance will tell us if, if the bees find their food within a suitable parameter, so, so we can start to have an idea about whether we are on the right track transforming back those monoculture areas. They are like biosensors for us, yeah. I think it's fascinating that we can use bees as sensors for what is happen happening around in the world uh, and that we can use uh, machine learning to decode the bees and what they really are saying to each other and to us. The aim of this hackathon is just to be able to identify the bees who do the bagel dance and decode the dance into distance and angle. And using SESWIRE, we will then have a geographical map of the area. 
that the beekeeper will be able to access on his phone and he can view last movement of the bees and he will be able to see where are the good food sources. From this he can tell where he should relocate the hives. So using the, the bees as sensors for, for what is happening in, in this ecosystem is, is uh, fantastic because we have now another source of information and using our knowledge around technology and using our knowledge around um, algorithms, uh, machine learning, video analytics, we can help to get closer to a solution that has been there that we maybe haven't seen that clearly before because we haven't measured it. So one of the cool things here are, is that we have no idea what we will actually will see. We of course hope to be able to decipher how the bees communicate where the food sources are located. But there's other information that they share also through the dancing. So the dancing is their way of communication. Like we talk, they dance. By observing them continuously and decoding their dance, we have no idea what we will actually see of other information that they might communicate to each other. And that's one of the exciting things here, I think, that we may provide our way of decoding the dance back to the academia and they may use it in future research to see if there are other things that we can learn from the bees that we are unaware of until now. The problem to solve is to understand where the bees are finding the food and then predicting better placement of the cubes. The data we have is the bee video, the hive coordinates, the sun angle, the time of the day, geographical map around the hive, and the agriculture around the hive. Building the model, we first identify the bees. Then we find the movements. We find which of the bees are waggling. Then we decode the distance and the angle to where the food is. All this is implemented in a map in Sasvaya. And using this map, we can then suggest where to move the hives and where to plant new crop according to the time of the year. First, we train a neural network to identify individual bees and the bees orientation in an image. We then run this bee identifying network on all images from a movie recorded in a beehive. The movement of the individual bees between frames in the movie is determined using a so-called PIV software. PIV is a technology originally developed in physics to track particles in a turbulent flow. We then use a statistical approach looking at each bee track to identify which bees that do the waggle dance before we decode the direction and length of the waggles to represent a position of a good forage area on the map. By doing this, we actually are fulfilling eight of the 17 sustainability goals of UN. Erasement of hunger, creating decent work and economic growth, increased industry innovation and infrastructure, mobilizing sustainable cities and communities, influencing responsible consumption and production. We are organizing a climate action, advancing life on land and building partnership and goals. So we're really proud to be in this project. We have to make sure that we share. It's like a thing doesn't move forward unless we share. And it's so important in the society that we live in that we help each other. The bees need to survive. And this is vital. Uh, yeah, I think I think we're going to fix it. I think it's, uh, we are going to fix it with with many with full industry, which is marching towards uh, sustainability.